live the life of a servant at Longleat House. There were 43 indoor servants at Longleat and most of them started work when they were still children. In fact, back in 1891, over 100,000 servants were girls and boys between the ages of 10 and 15. Most servants' days began and ended by candlelight. They had to be up very early, every day, because there was so much work to do. The servants' bedrooms were usually in the attic, poorly furnished, and because there was no central heating, very cold. All servants had to wear a uniform, and they often had to pay for it out of their wages. Although their room and food came free, the housemaid of a hundred years ago would only have been paid around 50 pence a month. That's just 26 pounds in today's money. Servants didn't have time to admire the grand surroundings they worked in. There was far too much to be done. Because as well as no central heating, there were no vacuum cleaners, washing machines or shortcuts. Everything had to be done the hard way, by hand. The house with servants was fitted with a network of bells. In the servants' quarters below stairs, an indicator board showed where a bell was ringing. No matter what they were doing, the good servant was trained to answer its call as quickly as possible. Some of their jobs seem very bizarre now, like uh, ironing the newspapers. This stopped a lord or lady's fingers from getting inky. Mrs Parker, Longleat's much-feared housekeeper, was in charge of the housemaid's work. She would inspect it by running her finger along the surfaces to see if she could find any dust. If she did, the trembling housemaid would be summoned for a stern oh, telling Constance. off. Yes, I do need to have a word with you. Some employers hid coins under their carpets. If the coins weren't found, then the maid was skimping her work. If they disappeared, she was obviously dishonest and would be sacked. If a servant was dismissed, it was almost impossible for them to get another job, as they needed a reference or good report from their old employer. One reason why servants put up with their harsh lives. Most servants were given just one half day off a week and hardly ever any holidays. Boyfriends and girlfriends were strictly forbidden and often even the older servants weren't allowed to marry. In fact, most servants weren't even supposed to be seen at their work. Many had orders to freeze on the spot or even hide if they heard a lady or gentleman coming. Even your name wasn't your own. Many servants were renamed by their employers. After all, it was easier if the maids were always called by the same name. Sometimes a servant could send a little money home. Big houses offered many poor children the only kind of career they could have. And if they behaved, they had a place for life. But times changed. After the First World War, when many women worked for the first time, there were new jobs, which paid better and offered much more freedom. Even the grandest families found they could no longer find or afford so many servants. Slowly but surely, servants left and weren't replaced. But to the housemaid of a hundred years ago, all this would have seemed like science fiction. She shut her eyes and said her prayers, knowing that in a few short hours her long day's work would begin all over again. Oh, poor Connie, I she's wonder good. where she was today. Well, well, in fact, she's back at my house uh, oh. just preparing the tea. Can I